It's the letter that's gaining national attention. The letter where nearly 250 U.S. mayors are demanding the Senate to tighten up background checks on gun purchases. Mayor Brand just announcing on this very program that he did sign that letter. And it's the latest call for action following the string of mass shootings. So that's where we begin round two with our panel this week. Jim Veros, Nathan Miller, and Lisa Bryant. Nathan, I'm going to bring you in here uh, first because uh, I'm going to now ask you to put your lawyer cap on. Um, and the mayor signs this letter, but he also vetoed the advanced peace program that really aims to reduce gun violence within the city. Um, that's like a double-edged sword there. Why, why do you think he's doing that? You know, I, I think part of the reason he's probably doing it is to appease some of his constituents. I think there's this national push for gun control. Uh, and at this time, in this moment, it's probably the right decision for him to do. Um, for him personally, I don't. Some people might not uh, might not like it. Personally, I think it's you know anything we can do to curb gun gun violence without taking away the second minute, uh, second amendment rights and not making it more difficult for law abiding citizens to get guns. I think is okay. But I guess we'll see where this takes us. Uh, Jim, I'll come to you. Uh, Mayor Brand, he's not running for re-election, so maybe he was signing this on with his heart rather than maybe his. Uh constituents like yeah. Nathan was talking about. So if he was maybe running for re-election, do you think he'd put his name on it? Yeah, I think he would. I think the demographics of the city of Fresno have changed, uh, you know, uh, over the past few years. I think you got to take a look back at Casey 24's uh, mayoral, de mayoral debate when it was uh, Perea and Lee Brand, and mm -hmm. Lee wouldn't endorse uh, uh, at that time candidate Trump. So he hasn't always been this staunch you know, Republican uh, uh, warrior soldier kind of person that maybe some of the other folks around here are. Um, you know, listen, th that's Lee. Lee hasn't, you know, he's been, he's really worked at being a, a moderate. And I think that the days of thoughts and prayers, uh, quote unquote, are, are, are probably over. Yeah. So I, I think that he, he, you need to put your name uh, on something and if you want to be part of a, an adult conversation. And I think that's what he wants to do. Lisa, do you, you think he almost had to put his name, though, because if not, knowing that he's not, running for re-election, maybe that taints what he did as mayor? Yeah, I mean, I think that, again, being a stats person, I'm going to go back to the numbers. 91% of Americans, bipartisan support for background checks, bipartisan support for an extended waiting period. He doesn't really have a lot to lose with putting his name on it, but by not putting his name on it and being sort of a holdout of major U.S. cities, it's not just major California cities, it's major U.S. cities. I mean, Fresno is a top, you know, 75 city in this country. You know, it's a, it's a bipartisan letter by bipartisan mayors, and so what sort of message does that send for Fresno if we're a holdout on it? Um, I think that, you know, politically it was a smart move, uh, personally, it might be his heart. He's a dad. He's, you know, he's got mm -hmm. grandkids. Like he, people are affected by this, and so I think, you know, and we're not we're talking about gun violence. We're not even talking about suicide rates and all mm -hmm. the other things that really guns in this country, um, the problems we need to deal with. And so I think that it was a smart move on his part. Well, I'm going to switch the conversation to uh, what we saw this week, and that was the volatile stock market. We just heard from Connie Conway talking about, hey. You know, it's the stock market. It's going to go up and down. But we saw it go to its lowest point this year, um, obviously, because there is that reliable economic measure that triggered the recession alarm bells. Can Trump survive this one again? Now I'm going to ask you to put your business cap on, because what do you think of this? I mean, are, are you? Whoa, wait a minute. Maybe we need to relax on some of our business dealings. No, I think I think we're going in the right direction. I think Trump, everything he's doing is fine with respect to, to making sure that we're going to bounce back. I think that if you look where we came from since he's been elected to now, it yeah, it was a big drop, the biggest drop it's you know had in a day. I have absolutely no doubt in the grand scheme of things he's going to bring it right back. I don't see a recession coming. This is Jim, this is his sticking point. This is this is the biggest part of his reelection campaign is the economy. If it goes south, it's over. Money doesn't sleep. And yeah. neither does the markets. And the markets are going to dictate if Donald Trump is going to win re-election or not. That's what it kind of looks like. When you take a look at some of the Democratic debates, you're not really seeing a ton of people that really are scaring the president right now. It's purely going to be the economy. And you do have some indicators uh, coming out of the markets that should be sounding some alarms. Maybe not so much of like a 2008, 2009 uh, recession, that, you know, biggest one since the Depression. Mm -hmm. But I think you got to take a look at we quit quantitative easing a couple years ago. And then, you know, the, the, the yield curve uh, inversion, that was something that really triggers 
you know, some thoughts of, hey, you're not going to win re-election in the middle of a recession. Mm -hmm. Take a look at how many presidents right. lost their election during a recession. It, numbers don't lie and, and yeah. money doesn't sleep. This, this, he has to fix this. President Obama obviously winning that election during the time where, uh, after a Republican president, mm -hmm. We weren't, we weren't doing so well as a right. country. Uh, Lisa, I want to come to you. Uh, President Trump saying it was fake news that created the markets to crash. You buying it? No. Not at all. I mean, I think that investors don't really care about the fake news, right? They look at what kinds of sales are we doing overseas? What are the yields coming out of ag markets and um, things like that? What are people trading? Are they holding? Are they selling? Where are investments going? And, you know, they're running the market. I don't think that it was fake news. I think that fake news has become sort of a point that he, it's a, it's a fallback, you know, for him. Anything that isn't in his favor is fake news. Do you think, uh, do you think it'll trend back up? Or do you think this, this is going to, uh, unlike... I don't counterparts here. <laughs> <laughs> I don't make predictions. Yeah. Um, I do think I agree with Jim actually that if we, we if we see uh, stagnation, if we see we don't see quarterly growth, we don't see growth in GDP. Um, if jobs start to slip, if new housing start to slip, then that could be bad news for him. For somebody who's never crossed fifty percent approval, that could be bad news. Uh -huh. I also take a look at is that we also had the largest Dow Jones number under him also. Yeah. So listen, it is a volatile market, well, but he's got to get. 000. He's got to get yeah. in front of this trade with China. He's got to get this thing yeah. figured out. If he figures that out, the markets will level. If not, he's got problems. I'll give you ten seconds. You want I, to I agree. I think when he figures out China. It's going to bounce way back yeah. as long as he can awesome. do that. And I think he knows that. All right. We'll see how it all plays out. Thank you guys for, for being here. Good stuff. You can catch them as well on yourcentralvalley.com. All right.